Hello everyone! This time I'm going to take you to two ancient sites, Mira and Limira. mountainous region of Lycia, also known as the Land of the Tombs, is located on a peninsula between the bays of Antalya and Fethiye. Let's go! We're heading to Mira, which was one of the largest cities in ancient Lycia and once a capital of the region. We are starting our exploration at Mira's necropolis. We know of at least four different types of Lycian mortuary monuments. Pillar tombs, sarcophagi, temple tombs and the most famous ones, house tombs, which we are looking at right now. But why were they carved so high on a cliffside? There are actually two theories. One says that according to Lycian beliefs, magic-winged angels carried the souls of the dead to the sun. Therefore, it was crucial to erect tombs high above the ground. Another hypothesis states that the deceased were, in the form of spiritual beings, watching over the city and its inhabitants. Hence, the placement of the mortuary monuments. Dated to the 4th or 5th century BC, this splendid necropolis, known as the Sea Necropolis, was designed to resemble a vibrant city. These tombs date back to the 4th century BC. Thanks to the inscription, we know that 13 of them are Lycian and 10 of them are ancient Greek. A large number of tombs look like wooden houses. They are pierced with innumerable windows and are often several stories high. They originally featured stone doors with accurately carved doorknobs and bolts. When discovered in 1840 by the British archaeologist Charles Fellows, all mortuary monuments were vividly painted red, yellow and blue. Not only do the facades of the graves imitate wooden architecture, just take a look at these protruding beams, but all tombs are connected by paths, gates or rock stairs. The tomb's interiors are rather plain, roughly hewn and include stone couches. The tomb held more than one body, quite often a whole family. That's why some of the monuments display frieze over the entrance with inscriptions indicating the tomb owner and his family, and sometimes short curse against robbers. Mira features the largest theatre in the Lycia region with a capacity over 10,000 spectators. 
The first original theater was Greek and much, much smaller, built probably in the first century BC, but after an earthquake in 141 AD, it was severely damaged. Rebuilt shortly afterwards in Roman style, it features large vaulted structures ensuring a greater resistance to earthquakes. It's around 111 meters wide and features one diazoma, above which are six rows of seats. The lower part is divided into nine kerkides and has 29 benches. Looking at this marvelous structure, let's get to know more about Lycians. The region was initially inhabited by the people known as Milians, speaking an Indo-European Luvian language. Around the 14th century BC, Lycia was referred to as Lukka or Lukka lands by the Hittites and Egyptians. Thanks to their texts, we know that Lycians, although not so powerful in terms of political affairs, were great sailors and later on became a part of the Sea Peoples. They were raiding Egypt throughout the reign of Ramesses the Great, his son and Ramesses III, during the Bronze Age collapse. After the collapse of the Hittite Empire, Lycia was an independent kingdom. However, throughout centuries, Lycians, with short periods of freedom, were under the rule of Persians, Greeks, Macedonians, Ptolemy, Romans and Ottomans. The most known Lycian fight was against Persian attack in the 6th century BC. The inhabitants of Xanthos, one of the Lycian cities, knew they are going to lose the battle. So they destroyed the Acropolis, killed their women, children, slaves and went on the suicidal battle. Luckily, 80 Xanthosian families were living in other parts of Anatolia at the time. When they came back, they rebuilt the city along with the refugees from other regions. The theatre is most known for its richly decorated stage building, which is partly collapsed. It originally displayed beautifully carved theatrical masks and mythological characters, for example, Gades and Luthera, Ganymede, the Eagle of Zeus and Medusa. In the middle aisle we can find benches with armrests in the shape of dolphins, as they are one of the symbols of Dionysus, god of theatre. This is the only theater in the region featuring reliefs on the outer facade of the stage building, gods and mythological creatures among the garlands.
Multiple pieces of the stage building are placed today in front of the theater, which actually allows us to admire the craftsmanship from up close. Theatrical masks are a classical Greek invention from around 6th century BC. Their exaggerated and often grotesque features enabled actors to change swiftly into different characters, as apart from the chorus, only three male actors could perform the whole play. Two most famous masks, tragedy and comedy, are also known as Thalia and Melpomene. These are the names of two muses, the goddesses of inspiration. Melpomene was the patron of tragedy and Thalia of comedy. The most famous person from Myra is Santa Claus, as it was here in the 4th century AD, where Saint Nicholas served as a bishop and was secretly helping the people of Myra. We're heading now 35 kilometers northeast to explore another Lycian site, Limera, located in a small village of Yuvalilar. I'm very excited to see the city of Limra, and in a few moments you will know why. Limra, Zemuri in Lishan, probably already existed in the 2nd millennium BC, as it's mentioned in the Hittite texts. However, excavation in situ haven't found any evidence of such early occupation yet. The Golden Age of Limera is dated to the 4th century BC, during the reign of Pericle, who conducted a great construction project and actually ruled the whole eastern Lycia from here. After entering the site we see a Ptolemaean dedicated to Ptolemy II Philadelphus, who was a pharaoh of Egypt from 283 to 246 BC. He helped Limerians when they were threatened by the Celtic tribe from central Anatolia, Galatians. The structure was originally 30 meters high, with reliefs depicting battle between the Lapids and Centaurs. It featured Doric columns and was crowned with a sculpture of leaves and snakes, as the snake was a symbol of the Macedonian Egyptian kings between the 3rd and 2nd century BC. Now you know what I was so excited about. The city is partly underwater. There was once a wide 8.4 meters Roman colonnade street paved with fine limestone blocks and a two-storied basilica built in the 6th century AD. Today they are completely flooded with crystal clear spring water of the Limerus river. We may only see the remains beneath the water. I took you here as I wanted to show you, in my opinion, quite a unique ancient site. Let's try to imagine how spectacular the city must have looked having this wonderfully carved Corinthian capital in front of us. We can't forget that Limera had two voices in a Lycian League, which is believed to be the first democratic union in history established around 205 BC. three cities, depending on their size, sent one, two or three representatives to the council, called Synedrion, and decided on the legal, religious and economic affairs of the region. Does this building remind you of something? Yep. This experimental structure was modeled on Lycian rock-cut house tombs, as it's believed that Lycians imitated civic structures in their mortuary architecture. 
the Andron, as the structure was named after the men's room in ancient houses, is entirely made of wood and put together by use of notch joints. Because of its location near the stream, some parts had to be replaced with modern materials. To show you more of this ancient town, I have to somehow cross the stream, as there is no other way. Wish me luck! Now I'm in the middle and I can't stop. Oh, where should I go? The stones are moving. Ah, I don't know what to do. Ah! Count to three. One, two, three. Ah! Ah! <laughs> No. Ah, I made it! I made it! <laughs> Limira was once famous for its oracle, Holy Trout, predicting the future. As we all know, trout don't speak, so instead they were offered food. When accepted, the luck was on your side. When rejected, you'd better abandon your plans. As they say, beauty lies in simplicity. As you can see, the ancient remains are surrounded by meadows, high grass and fields. There are almost no tourists here. We are in the middle of an idyllic Turkish countryside. Limira obviously featured a Roman theatre, built also after the earthquake in 141 AD. In comparison to the one in Mira, we can say that its current state of preservation isn't that grand. Unfortunately, it was closed and, as you can see, the fence was rather impenetrable. As mentioned at the beginning of our journey, the Lycia region is known as the land of the tombs. And Limera isn't an exception, as it features not one or two, but five necropolises. I wanted to film some of the multiple rock cut tombs high on the mountain slope. However, little did I know what I was in for. A local man showed me the way, but it definitely wasn't a touristic path. I'm walking through the lost trail. I hope I will find something, but we will see. So I have to go through private properties, fruit orchards and fences, not really knowing where I am going, but hey, no risk, no fun. I don't exactly know where the tombs are, just up the slope I go. I actually don't know what I'm doing, but the only thing I'm sure of right now is that I'm not properly dressed.
Finally, the first tomb! We made it! Lishans believe that after death the soul turns into a bird, dove or pigeon. The tombs served as their eternal houses, thus it was necessary to build them as similar as possible to houses they lived in when alive. The tombs were protected by a goddess named Leto, who since the 4th century BC after the region became Hellenized, was the most important deity for Lycians, worshipped as a patroness of the Lycian nation and families. She was a mother of Apollo and Artemis, who along with her were praised above all Lycian deities. The priests of the Leto's temple in the sanctuary of Latun, near Xanthos, were also the highest priests of the Lycian League. However, it's also possible that the cult of Leto is much older and she's one of the embodiments of an Anatolian mother goddess and her name may derive from Lada, which means wife or woman in Lycian. The whole Lycian region features more than 1000 tombs. I'd say that on this slope alone there are more than 100 of them. It's time to go back and I really hope that I'll find the way down. If you want to visit Limira and explore some rock cut tombs, but you don't want to hike or you're not properly prepared, like me, don't worry, there are some exquisite examples just next to the main street not far away from the theatre. In 74 AD, the Emperor Vespasian connected two Roman provinces, Pamphylia and Lycia, into the province of Lycia at Pamphylia. Like many other Anatolian regions after the Byzantine period, Lycia fell under the rule of the Ottoman Empire. Thank you for watching, if you liked this episode you might also enjoy my previous video from Aspendos and playlists from Greece and Egypt, links down below. I'm still exploring Turkey, so if you want to stay up to date with new episodes, please subscribe to my channel. And see you on another ancient site!